Thank you very much, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of the Senate, distinguished guests, and most importantly, family and friends and the graduating class for this year here at UWA. Let me add my congratulations to all of you uh, on your achievement of getting to the end of your degree. I don't have a two-hour lecture here, although I could talk that long. I'm sure that's exactly what all of you would love to have right at this point in time as you're looking to get out of here with your degrees. So I will avoid that and I'll cut straight to it. I was very honoured being asked to speak here before you all because it felt like such an important thing to try to offer some wise words to some new graduates about their life and their career ahead. So I thought, what better way to do that than to think back to when I graduated, not at this university, at undergraduate level over East, to what was said to me by the person that did the same speech. I had absolutely no memory of anyone speaking at that time. Not the topic, not the person, not the gender of the person. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope I can leave a slightly stronger mark than that on this year's graduating class. I don't know if that was a reflection of my callow youth or the speech that was offered, uh, but let's see how we go. When you get asked to do something like this, you obviously decide that you want to try to put as much effort into it as I'm sure the students here put into their major essays. So I started last night at around midnight, <laughs> popped about four Sudafeds, had as many Red Bulls, and then this morning when the speech was incomplete, I decided to blame IT as well as my printer. But I stand here before you anyway and, and hope to offer a few observations about life uh, and work. The problem is today is an incredibly proud day for family and friends and I suspect for most of the graduates you're yet to realise just how significant today is for you. Uh, but it's a depressing day for me that I've joined the ranks up here because it tells me how much older I'm getting. You're all so much younger and have so much to look forward to and that's a lot of what I want to talk to you about today. But the family that you have here and the friends that you have here in no way, shape or form underestimate how proud they are of what you've managed to achieve, getting to the ends of your degrees and completing them. And this is but the first step. I remember when finishing high school being shocked at how much more breadth there was in the world once hitting university and it only gets larger once you go further afield into the rest of your lives and the rest of your careers as well. This university's motto is seek wisdom. For me, I take that to mean keep an open mind. Have the willingness to change your mind and be prepared when circumstances change to equally change your mind then as well. It was John Maynard Keynes who said, when the facts change, I change my mind, what do you do? Whether it's in modern politics or in other spheres of life, there's too much rigidity, I would argue, at the moment in the world. And what I would implore you to do is use the analytical tools that you've got as a consequence of your intelligence as well as what you've learnt at this university and take that opportunity not to be rigid in thought but rather to be agile and prepared to go with the flow when the circumstances require change. Now, there are two elements, I suppose, to what I can talk about. Ideas for life and ideas for career. The most important thing, I think, is that you try to bring the two together and do something that you are genuinely passionate about that represents what you want your life to be, not just a job. But before you do that, and this is perhaps something that this side of the room won't be quite as keen on me trying to convince that side of the room of, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. I can't imagine too many things now that I'm 43 years of age that I think, damn, I wish I'd achieved that when I was 42, if only. Don't feel the need, despite all the uncertainty of the world that we live in and the job market and all the rest of it, to rush into things, but that doesn't mean waste your time. Take the opportunity not to rush to judgment by doing the things that you can only get to do at this point in your life. That's what I would implore you to do from a life perspective. From a career perspective, I think it's really important that people stand up to bullying, but in doing so, pick your fights. Everything doesn't need to be an argument or a fight. You can choose when you think it matters, and when you do make that choice, 
and if you are bluffing as part of what you're saying, always be prepared to have that bluff called. One thing that, and I've bluffed a fair bit in my life, one thing that I've always kept as a golden rule when doing so is always be prepared for the outcome of that bluff being called. If you're not prepared for that, then don't do it. Don't go down that particular course. The world as we know it has changed so incredibly much. Even just in the time since I graduated from undergrad or indeed from postgrad as well, I struggle to keep up now in my lectures. Students that I've had would know uh, my ability to stand in front of a lecture group and require every single week one of the students to come forth and help turn my PowerPoint on for me. That's something that I've never been able to fix. One time when I was putting in my password, I probably shouldn't be saying this in front of the Vice-Chancellor, but one time when I was putting in my username and password, a very honourable student put her hand up and informed me. She said, Professor Van Onselen, I don't think that's your username, as my password was there for all to see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you go through life as graduates, there's one thing that will be the most important thing for you to come to terms with, I believe, and that's how to handle setbacks. Because one thing I can assure you is that throughout your life, if you haven't already had them, you will have setbacks and you will have significant setbacks along the way. I had a golden run for a long chunk of my life before I hit my first series of setbacks and coming to terms with it is the hardest part, but the rewarding part is when you do have those moments, they provide life-changing opportunities where you can genuinely turn it into a chance to reevaluate what you're doing, recalibrate where you're at, and decide whether you want to continue on the course you're on or move in another direction. The scary thing, I think, where I your age entering the workforce now would be just how mobile working lives are these days, just how shorter periods of employment can be in particular fields. But within that, I think that there's enormous opportunity as well, and it becomes a mindset thing on how you approach it. Yes, there's much greater uncertainty in the employment market of today than there was when I graduated, or certainly uh, when my parents were of a similar age many years ago. But you can see that as an opportunity as well, because my father spent 40 years at the one business, in the one job at the one company. I've already made significant career changes at what I believe and hope and cling to is still my short life. So I would implore you to see it as an opportunity, the chance to try different things, even if it ends up being in the same sphere because you've found what it is that you want to do. Take those opportunities and embrace the challenges of a setback when it does happen, rather than fall into a heap and let it consume you. I want to finish by talking about a quote, and I'll probably paraphrase this because I'm not using notes rather than get it exactly right, but it's an unattributed quote. I tried very hard online to find an author to it. Wikipedia gave it about 20 authors. I'm pretty sure that it continues to be unattributed. It's the idea that it is better to be silent and be thought a fool rather than speak out and remove all doubt. I could not disagree more with an observation than that fairly well-worn quote. Sitting silent is the last thing that you should do. Speaking up is what life is all about, particularly for the generations coming through now. Not being quiet, letting your voice be heard in whatever theatre that might be, is exactly what you should be doing. And of course, when you ask questions, you may make some foolish questions along the way, but that is not something to be frightened of, that is something to be embraced. I think that it's generations past, well before mine, that were brought up to believe that you would be quiet. My kids, for example, don't even come close to the concept of being seen and not heard, if only. The generations of today know how to let their voice be heard, and politics being my thing is an area where it's never more important than at the moment for generations coming through to have their voices heard, particularly younger generations, ladies and gentlemen, because here in this country we have compulsory voting, which seems unusual for most people in other parts of the world. 
but in other democracies around the world, non-compulsory voting tends to be the dominant way things go. The British election, which Australian time will be started on Friday morning, has non-compulsory voting. The youth of today are so much busier than the youth of yesteryear, balancing all the things that they have to balance. I would implore you to make sure, whether it's through your work or just through your lives, if it's outlets beyond your work, do not be silent, be heard, and be loudly heard, and never be afraid when asking a question or offering an observation that it might not be well received or that it might be less well informed than it will become over time as a result of having been prepared to ask it. Thank you very much.